Africa, the land that's often labeled as the division between the haves and the have-nots. But let's take a closer look at Eswatini, shall we? You see, the royals of Eswatini are living their best lives, surrounded by their lavish palaces and private jets, while 63% of the population is earning less than a dollar a day. Talk about a royal jackpot, huh? And despite the country being in the midst of an economic crisis and rampant poverty, King Maswati III still managed to amass a fortune of $200 million. And that's not all. He controls a trust fund that's worth $10 billion. Yeah, why bother having a well-operating economy when one can just rely on a trust fund, right? Because apparently that's how they roll, with billions in their trust funds and millions in their pockets. It seems like in Eswatini, cars are rarer than unicorn sightings. With only 32 cars per 1,000 people, the chances of getting a ride in a car are about as likely as winning the Powerball. But the king himself is not struggling with the lack of cars, which isn't too surprising. The collection of cars belonging to his highness is of such value that it could leave even Birdman feeling embarrassed. It seems like money can't buy happiness, but it sure can buy a fleet of luxury cars while the rest of the country is squeezing onto overcrowded buses and trains. The king is cruising around in his fancy wheels, probably listening to his favorite playlist on full blast. And it looks like the king has a serious case of Royce Royce fever, because forget one or two, he's got a whole fleet of those fancy cars. It's like he's the Rolls Royce Santa Claus, but instead of toys, he's delivering luxury cars to himself. But the people of Eswatini are not impressed with the king's love for Rolls Royces. In 2019, when a truck full of luxury autos, including 19 Rolls Royces and 120 BMWs, were caught crossing the South African border into Eswatini, it caused quite a stir. That's a whole lot of bling on wheels. Many journalists in Africa were quick to call out the king's extravagance accusing him of ignoring the needs of his citizens and spoiling himself. He's clearly playing a game of monopoly with himself, and instead of investing in infrastructure or affordable housing, he's spending all his money on fancy cars. Let's just hope that the King's Rolls Royce collection doesn't get any bigger. Or he might need to build a new garage just to house them all. He really went all out with his car collection, spending $24.4 million on a fleet of Rolls Royces and BMWs. Whenever he needs to travel around the country, he does so in style, riding in the back of a, you guessed it, a Rolls Royce. And you know you've made it big when the red carpet is rolled out every time you attend a festival or ceremony. The king's 15 wives and 23 children also get to enjoy the luxurious cars, just like a modern-day Brady Bunch on wheels. Now, I'm no detective, but it seems like the king likes to keep his car collection a bit of a mystery. His private life is more closely guarded than the recipe for Nutella, so we can only speculate what's in his garage. But lucky for us, we do know some of his favorite cars. One of them is the Rolls Royce Phantom, worth $450,000. It's the kind of car that makes you feel like you're driving a tank with a velvet interior, with a 6.75 liter V12 engine that puts out 563 horsepower. This car has more power than a rocket ship. In fact, the Phantom can go from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.3 seconds. That's faster than it takes us to make a cup of coffee in the morning. And with a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour, the king can outrun any paparazzi trying to snap a photo of him cruising around in his stylish ride. We can only imagine the king driving around town in his Rolls Royce Phantom, feeling like the king of the road. Pun so intended. Not only does he have a Phantom in his collection, but he also owns a Bentley Flying Spur that cost him $214,000, which is actually just a drop in the bucket compared to to his annual salary of $50 million. The King's Bentley Flying Spur is no slouch when it comes to power. With a 626 horsepower W12 engine, this car can reach a top speed of 333 kilometers an hour, which is fast enough to make your face look like it's melting in the wind. And if you need to get to 100 kilometers an hour in a hurry, the Flying Spur can do it in just 4.6 seconds. Yeah, it's no surprise that Bentleys are popular with royalty all over the world. In fact, 
The luxury car company even built two state limousines for Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee. We bet the king is quite jealous of that. He's probably thinking, why didn't they build me a state limousine? I have 15 wives and 23 kids to chauffeur around, you know. But hey, with a car collection like the king's, who needs a state limousine anyway? He can just hop in his Bentley Flying Spur and feel like a king. Because, well, he is one. In his majestic collection, you'll also find a Mercedes-Benz W221 that cost an arm and a leg, and a Rolls Royce Cullinan that's so customized it probably is a built-in spa in mini movie theater. With a V12 engine that roars like Mufasa and a speed that'll make you see stars, this car is fit for a king. Not to mention King Waswati III also has 20 Mercedes Maybach S600 Pullmans, a Maybach 62, and a BMW X6 because one can never have too many cars, like one can never have too many shoes. But don't even think about trying to sneak a peek at his garage, because he's got a strict no photography policy. Ah, the king and his love for flying high in the sky. His private planes have been causing quite a commotion. The first one, a 20 million McDonnell Douglas MD-87, was allegedly gifted to him by an Indian mining company. I guess they figured, why give the king a diamond when you can give him a whole airplane? But after using it for a few years, the king decided it was time for an upgrade. So he went all out for his 50th birthday and splurged on a $16 million Airbus A340-300 from China Airlines in Taiwan. But not everyone was happy about this purchase. UNICEF reportedly warned the king that buying the plane could make him ineligible to receive emergency funds. Who knew owning a fancy airplane could cause such drama? Needless to say, the public was not impressed. But when you're royalty, you get to do whatever you want, even if it means causing a huge uproar. His Airbus A340-300 is quite an impressive flying machine. With a range of 13,700 kilometers and a top speed of 913 kilometers per hour, he can practically fly to the moon and back in no time. No one he's using it to jet off to meet dignitaries all over the world. But while the king is living the high life, it seems like his extravagant purchase may have come at a cost. Reports suggest that up to $400,000 in food development aid may have been lost due to the plane's purchase. Maybe the king could use his new airplane to drop some seeds and fertilizer to the impoverished farmers instead of just jetting off to meet other elites. Just a thought, your majesty. Being an absolute monarchy, it's no surprise that the king has access to more palaces than you can count. And it's not just any old palaces, mind you. The annual budget of the royal family is a staggering $61 million, and the king and his wives regularly spend millions redecorating their palaces. Who needs one fancy palace when you can have 10? 10 is better than one, or so they say. In fact, back in 2004, the king even gave one of his girlfriends $15 million to redecorate the of his palaces and build new ones for each of his 11 wives at the time. Talk about a man who knows how to keep his woman happy. But that's not all. The royal family also spent an additional $4 million that same year to commission five brand new state homes. So while the rest of us are struggling to pay rent, the king is playing real life sims and building palaces left and right. <laughs> Must be nice. The king's most luxurious residence, the Lazitha Royal Palace. It's where the king spends most of his time, and it's not just any ordinary palace. Oh no, this palace is the definition of extravagance. The Lozitha Royal Palace is so upscale that it's often used for political meetings with visiting dignitaries. And with its golden hallways lined with red rose bouquets and crystal chandeliers, we wouldn't be surprised if those dignitaries get distracted and forget why they're there in the first place. The palace boasts a massive golden conference room with ornate red and gold colored tapestries. Yeah, if you're gonna have a meeting, why not do it in immaculate style? But the Lozitha Royal Palace isn't the only luxurious home the king owns. There's also the Ludzid Zini Palace, which is where the Queen Mother lives. It's located about 10 miles from Lozitha and is the site of the annual reed dance ceremony and numerous other important festivals and celebrations. Honestly, with all these palaces, the king could probably start his own real estate business. And if that doesn't work out, he could always rent out his palaces on Airbnb. King Maswati is not only a car and airplane enthusiast, but also a real estate tycoon. Apparently, he owns 60% of the entire country's land. That's right, 60%. And it's not just any old land. It's 1 million hectares 
sectors of prime farmland. But don't get too excited if you're a local farmer, because even if you use the land to grow your crops and raise your livestock, the king can still kick you out without any compensation. Oh, and did we mention that the king also owns thousands of cows and goats? I guess he really takes the phrase, treat livestock like you do your family, to heart. Speaking of family, it looks like the king's wives have some rather expensive taste. They love going on mega shopping sprees and buying high-end fashion and luxury goods. Residents often get upset as they see the queen spending thousands on Burberry, Versace, and Tommy Hilfiger. One princess even reportedly spent $820 on a studded backpack, triggering plenty of outrage because apparently, that's more than most people make in a year. And the kids, boy do they know how to live it up as well. They're like jet setters, except instead of collecting stamps in their passports, they collect celebrity sightings and exotic party themes. Some of their favorite destinations include Boston and LA, where they can rub elbows with the stars and indulge in high-end shopping sprees. And it's not just the destinations that are over the top. The King hosts some of the most lavish parties around, like the underwater-themed bash in Dubai. We're just hoping that the fish were paid extra for their party appearances. Now it's your turn to share your thoughts with us. Do you think the spending habits of the King and the Eswatini family are justified? Or do you believe they could be doing more for their country? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date on our latest episodes. Thanks for watching.